get ready to embark on an unforgettable journey through the heart of Europe in Hungary, a true haven for bird enthusiasts. Together with my friend Tim Six, we've spent four incredible days traveling this stunning country, capturing on film the sheer beauty of marvel of birds and wildlife in their natural habitats. But this adventure is so much more than a visual treat. We not only showcase the breathtaking diversity of avian species, but also reveal the soulful moments that birding can bring. So get ready to be captivated, inspired and moved. Join us as we unveil the secrets of Wings of Wonder, a birding adventure. Hello and welcome to Wings of Wonder, a birding adventure. I'm thrilled to present you this new series to highlight the beauty and the wonder of birds. Together, you and me will explore the different habitats in Hungary. From woodlands to lakes to steppes to salt lakes, there's everything included in one small country directly in Europe. Through our adventures, we hope to inspire your love for birding and wildlife filming and to showcase you the joy and the fulfillment it can bring. The wetlands, a mysterious habitat filled with a wide variety of bird species. It's good to apply some anti-mosquito spray. How do you call it in Australia? Mossies. Repellent. No, the, against the mossies. Mossies, yeah. <laughs> because I got bitten a lot the other days and I'm quite allergic to this. And of course, be aware of all the ticks that could enter the legs. We're currently now on a little fish pond and try to get different types of birds. I'm here with my presser, more into birding, while Tim is searching for the greatest shot. This cereal is sponsored by Bresser. I use Bresser for the last years and I started with a standard pinocular. Bresser is supplying you with a range for beginners up to high-end sport optics, such as pinoculars, or spotting scopes and of course the right equipment you need to go for a cool birding trip. With the promo code BIRD10 you receive a 10% discount on the actual Bresser Dachstein spotting scope. Check out the website of www.bresser.de and get your discount now. This remarkable bird, known for its exquisite songs, captivates both ornithologists and nature enthusiasts alike. The great reed warbler stands out as a true avian maestro. So that was a very cool little cameo right there. We just had a great reed warbler, which is like a, a reed warbler only on steroids with a very deep, throaty, scratchy, territorial call. And when we first arrived, it was very much concealed. You could just see the reeds moving. But after a few of these, and some of these, the bird became a bit more interested and slowly worked its way up to the top of the reeds. And at first, 
the footage was quite ordinary because the reeds were covering the bird, but as the bird became more confident and acclimatised to us being there, it came right out in the open and sang. Sang his little heart out, and we're hopeful that's going to be some really nice footage. Tim currently tries to get a squacko heron, beautiful spot, just on the opposite of this little pond here. The sun is shining directly on him. So I've just got a squacko heron here in amongst the reeds and they're a very shy bird. So I'm just going to hang around a little bit longer and just to see if he'll show again. Beautifully marked heron. So we'll see how we go. In the hidden corners of the wetlands, the squacko heron emerges as a true avian gem, captivating with its elegant appearance and fascinating lifestyle. The wetlands, once teeming with life and vibrant with the melodious calls of birds, now face an uncertain future. Human intrusions disrupt the peace of the wetlands, fragmenting their fragile habitats. Will we be the voice that speaks out for their survival? Hi guys, Tim from Australian Bird Media. I'm just with Franz in Hungary and we're just enjoying a fantastic weekend and we're doing some more birding together. And so I've been asked what's in my camera bag. So I'm about to show you. So what's in my camera bag? So I guess a lot of things in my camera bag are very similar to most photographers. Although one or two things may be different because I am shooting video with the uh, ambition always to make the next documentary. So I'll go through item by item. So one of the things I have in my camera bag is a good sound recorder. This one is actually quite ancient, ancient, um, probably 20 years old now, but it's an analog sound recorder. And uh, it's just really good to have that overlay of audio, of natural sound. I've actually got some beautiful natural sound at the moment with black caps calling and woodpeckers calling. So when you're making the documentary, it's good to have that as a, an extra line of audio to bring in the natural sound. So that's the first item. The second item I have in my bag is actually a, an important item, which you might not think so initially, but this is actually a cleaning kit. A few times I've been in the bush and you might have some dirt on the sensor and you might need to clean that when you're out and about. And this is super important with the different components here, the spray, the sensor cleaners, the little puffer, and a couple of cleaning cloths. I always put two in because you never know, you might have a couple of jobs to do while you're out and it's not good to reuse these cloths before they're cleaned or washed. So that's item number two. I have a couple of cameras with me. This one here is a 24 megapixel Nikon camera. And uh, yes, this camera I use a lot for landscapes. Um, for example, today I've been shooting some landscapes of, of water and wetlands, and also some dragonflies and different bits and pieces. But it's just a really nice small camera to have, something of this nature, uh, obviously mirrorless these days 
and sometimes even when you're going from one destination to that to the other or a different location you can just stop briefly and just capture an appropriate amount of habitat shot to, again to build the documentary so that's important uh, this guy here is my main camera so this guy here is a, a 45 megapixel camera this one here is a Nikon camera and um, 45 megapixel gives you the scope to shoot at possibly a slightly longer range and you've still got the detail that you can actually crop in in post and still re retain the, the detail of the bird. Um, this particular one records in 4K and 8K. So as with most things, technology improves and each year the camera's getting better. But I find for documentary purposes, this is a great camera. A little bit on the heavy side. I couple this with a 200 to 500 millimeter lens which um, gives me a really good range. If I'm in a hide or something like that, a 200 end is good, two to 300. And the 500 obviously have a longer range. This particular camera also has a crop sensor feature. So I can actually press one of the um, presets and it'll take me into crop mode. And that means essentially this camera becomes something more like around about um, 800 millimeters in focal length that's obviously very handy for example when we were on the danube the other day on the boat i was using a crop factor because some of the herons and the larger birds were quite a long way away but it still enables you to take those shots at a longer range This time of the day, it's about half past six. It's the nature restarts again because we had heading, we head towards this place at about twelve thirty, about one thirty, and the sun was really on the top. Now going more down, birds starting to sing again, to interact. It's great light for actually to go birding with the binocular, it's great light to film and uh, life goes up and slows down at the end of the day. So if you want to go birding, really recommend you, depends of already on the, on the place, but really early up in the morning, also depending on the species. During the day, make a break, look at your footage, get organized, and then at about four to five o'clock, Get out again till 8, till it's till the light is nice and catch up some nice birds. I love to go then really flexible with my binocular or with the spotting scope from Bressa or with the camera just to get some landscape and some habitat shots. And Tim loves to enjoy it going out with the camera and goes deep in and catching his beloved birds. We going for the I guess I missed Tim. Let's let's go. Let's search him. So now for a very, very difficult bird. It's the little bittern. So they're like a heron. They're tiny, quite diminutive. Not much bigger than a rail with a longer neck. And they're very, very secretive. Um, I found maybe up to 12 so far in Hungary, but each time they flush out of the reeds and fly to another pond. So they're very, very secretive. The best time actually to film these guys, or to find them at least, is when they've actually got young ones and they're going into the same location to feed. 
that's your best chance. But we'll see how we go, we know they're here, we've seen one already today. Let's see if we can film one. So we have just managed a short sequence of the little bitten. It's flying around from pond to pond, fishing and returning to the same middle pond. And uh, I've got a few seconds of the bird sitting on a shrub before it flew, but I think we're getting closer. This particular bird is of interest to me because I've seen it in textbooks or in field guides for many years, but it's my first attempt to actually film them. So super interesting. Interesting because the bird's so secretive too. But uh, we just had a bit of a funny moment. It's a shame we didn't get it on film. <laughs> I went to sit on my little stool here and well, one of the legs, one of the legs <laughs> sunk down to the mud and I literally went. <laughs> I thought he was just falling down in the water there. And Franz, like a good friend, just burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Little bitterns possess a remarkable ability to blend seamlessly with the surrounding vegetation. Keep still. Their agile movements allow them to navigate the labyrinth network of reeds and rushes without making any sound. These little bitten, they keep us active. We sit here about, I would say, 35 minutes. They fly from one side to another. Um, to be honest, I haven't seen these birds really close. While I'm fishing in Hungary, I've seen them flying many times on the Danube also, in the old arms of the Danube River. But here, um, as Tim already said, there might be two males chasing each other and having some territorial thing going on from the left to the right but spotting these birds once they flew into the shrub is extremely tough we were relocating them at least 15 20 minutes till i saw another one at the other side of the pond um, and now they are in front of us but well we can't really enter them because there's a big bush between us and them so that's birding again in these times when we are waiting we um, yeah just enjoy nature the sun the starlings flying around some swans with their little chicks swimming here there's a fisherman behind me just talk with him a little bit about his fishing gear and just into being interactive and enjoying nature that's always I think one of the most prettiest thing when you go out for birding and just come down, relax your body, relax your soul, get on one level with nature. Don't be annoyed by the mossies, by the mosquitoes and just make the best out of this day, out of your time and forget all the trouble you have in life right now. Maybe we can get a closer shot right now. He's watching us, though. So? Yep. Yeah, he gets nervous, you see? He's climbing up. Yep. Little bitterns are masterful at staying hidden, silently stalking their prey through dense vegetation. So Australian Bird Media, I started uh, this platform around about 2015 uh, on the back of, um, I've been filming birds in Australia and a few other locations.
for quite some time and uh, I had a hard drive full of wonderful experiences filming birds, filming bird behaviour, filming bird behaviour and my ambition was to show it to other people so essentially um, my, my collection of species was getting around about the 500 species in Australia and I thought it would be great to put that online as an educational tool and to make it accessible for everybody so that was the heartbeat uh, of the story and the history of the story and subsequently um, I started the YouTube channel which is Australian Bird Media on YouTube and I've also got an Instagram page and a Facebook page. Instagram is uh, Tim Sigs Birds of Australia and Facebook of course is just Tim Sigs Australian Bird Media. It's my latest documentaries of um, Birds of Tasmania is just online now and this particular documentary covers I think uh, something like 15 species of birds uh, in Tasmania and some of the wonderful mammals like platypus and, um, and quolls and so on. There will be another documentary coming which is a longer form of Tasmania uh, and that particular one will cover about 70 species of birds. So the ambition I guess is to showcase more of my work and uh, to get it out there and to, to get people enthused about the wonderful diversity and um, bird life and, and mammals and, and so on uh, of the wonderful continent that is Australia. The birds of the wetlands are truly a sight to behold. Their beauty and melodious have left us in awe throughout this documentary journey. The elegant white swan glides with serenity and the kingfisher proudly stretches its wings showcasing its resilience. These birds play an important role in the maintaining the balance of the wetlands and protecting the diverse species that rely on them. As we bid farewell to these breathtaking creatures, let us cherish and protect the wetlands. May the beauty of these birds and their melodious forever inspire us to appreciate the wonders of nature. <laughs>